Okay, where is it? Okay, go. Um, when you want to start a conversation with, let's say, whether it's a, an Israeli, South African, whatever it is, uh, if you're going to start out with a conversation of justice, you want to remember that if you do the issue out and you talk about politics from from uh, from a land standpoint, from a benefit standpoint, from we were here first, therefore we have the right to get this land first, uh, then you go into a very slippery slope, which is when we talk about human race, who actually said what human race, and are we going to go into all these genealogies? Have you got a point? Are we going to go into all these genealogies in order to see who's first? So take, a, take an issue of Palestine. Take an issue of Palestine. Um, Pal many Palestinians uh, insist that when we want to talk about Palestine, that we're going to talk about who came here first and that Palestinians, they're Canaanites and their origin and all that stuff. But here's a question. I mean, are we, are we by saying that, somehow saying that what was mentioned in the Quran, you guys, pay attention to this, that when what was mentioned in the Quran and when Prophet... And when Prophet, uh, when, when Prophet Musa alayhi salam was told to go to Ard al-Muqaddas, was, was told to go to basically Bayt al-Maqdas, and he was ordered to fight the Qawm al-Jabbarin. These Qawm al-Jabbarin, or al the Amalekites basically, um, they... Prophet Musa salam, was ordered to go and make jihad against the Amalekites, which is a Qawm al -Jabbarin. But Bani Israel were the ones that were procrastinating and said, you know what, why don't you and your Lord go fight them? If we are to say that, yeah, because we're Palestinians, therefore we have the right to be in this land more than the Israelis, because we are the Amalekite um, descendants. We have an ancestry of the Canaanites. This is a really big problem because you're actually presupposing that you're on, you're, you have the, the right to the land because you are somehow fighting for an issue of blood, generation, um, ancestry. And that's nothing but jahiliya. That's nothing but jahiliya right on the spot. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Prophet Musa alayhi salam to go for Bayt al-Maqdis, it was to continue the message, to continue the message and to let the message start from, um, to start from by having a, a land and start the message and delivering it to the rest of the world. But at in, in, that, in those ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was just telling us of how they reacted and why they did not deserve to be those that nation that will carry on the message. Are you going to see what I'm saying? Yep. Now, at the same time, when we look at the whole story of Palestine, for example, it's an issue of saying that we are followers of all the prophets. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered ordered Usama ibn Zayd, ordered Sariyat Usama ibn Zayd, ordered the Sahaba in order to continue the message to work on a mission, to continue the message and in including Bayt al-Maqdis. And he said that Bayt al-Maqdis was going to be conquered first. What was the issue of conquer? The issue is not only politics, because politics, politics, military, um, finances, economy, those are a reflection of how far the idea is going. How far and how powerful the idea is going. How do you weigh it? You weigh any idea, you weigh any philosophy by the political power, by the economical power, by the military power and the expansion that this is happening. So the Prophet when he was when he was saying the prophecies that 
Bayt al maqdis is going to be conquered first, or tuftahu awalan, or is going to be uh, is going to be under Muslim rule first. And when he said that, and futahat kunuz kisra, and now the the kunuz or the treasures of kisra in Persia had had fallen are now under Muslim rule. And then he says tuftah al qustantiniya, and that's basically uh, Istanbul right today. All these things were just to tell you what how. How can we weigh the power of Islam? Because Islam is a religion, but in order to weigh its power, you have to use politics and economy and, and economy and military in order to see how strong is it going past its own little area. You understand know what I'm saying? So when we actually look at Prophet Musa alayhi salam or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam saying that Sariat Usama ibn Zayd must must continue its way. Sariat Usama ibn Zayd must continue its way. Well, the reason why he said Sariat Usama ibn Zayd must continue its way, that's in order to say that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam's legacy is the same legacy as Musa ibn Imran. Musa ibn Imran, which is Prophet Musa. The same legacy of Sulaiman uh, ibn Dawood alayhi salam, the same legacy of Prophet Dawood, the same legacy of Sulaiman alayhi salam, and the list all goes on and on. The whole idea of Palestine is not an, an idea of an oppressed nation. It's not an idea of oppressed nation only, but there's more to it. It's an idea that Palestine weighs as the thermometer that weighs the Muslim Iman's, the Muslim Ummah's Iman. And when you look at Palestine, it's not just Palestine. It's not just Palestine because you, you, you're talking about a, a whole... Exactly. So when we see that the Muslims in, the Uyghur Muslims or the Muslims in, in, um, in Burma or whatever, uh, all these different Muslims that are being prosecuted, it's just a reflection of how weak we have become in our deeds and how weak we have become in our power. And that's why the Prophet says, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and get as much as you can from power. He says, All right, let's get to the surah right here. And the ayat we talked about from Surah Al Kaf, and from Surah Al Kaf, we talked about. Um, the, the young men that were fleeing prosecution because of their faith. And then we um, we talked about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to focus on the theme of the story and not the details of the story. That's not what's important. And then we go on. And recite. And recite. Ittilawa is more of your reciting but a repet uh, with repetition, you're reciting um, frequently. Ma uhiya ilayka. Ma uhiya. What was what was revealed? But the word wahi, the word wahi in itself could actually have several meanings. One, it can also mean a message that was sent instantly or fast. So fast, instant message. And wahi could also mean the message that was sent to Prophet that was sent from Prophet from Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. From Angel Jibreel alayhi salam on to the people. Down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and then to the people. So and recite what was revealed unto you. Now we said when we talk about the word uhiya, it's actually not an accurate translation to use the word revealed because it loses the momentum of who, which is actually from al wahi from Jibreel alayhi salam. So when you look at the word uhiya, it actually has the alif right there and wahi in it in order to give you that it was through Jibreel alayhi salam, the revelation that was done through Jibreel alayhi salam, ilayka, and recite what was sent on to you from Jibreel was sent on to you min kitab rabbik from the book of your lord the book of your lord what book al quran la mubaddila li kalimatih why la mubaddila li kalimatih 
because you want to remember there was actually a story to this is that um, the 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 people of Quraysh were offering the Prophet were offering the Prophet a deal and they said why don't you give up on some of the call that you're doing and we'll give up on some of what we're doing and that way we could both agree on a middle on a middle line so the Prophet for for a little short time he was kind of hesitant maybe it'll work out to kind of you know not rush things and kind of be gradual in some things but then the ayah the ayah actually continues so the ayah is telling you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was also on the watch disciplining the Prophet because from a human aspect we can get carried away whether with politics diplomacy and think well, maybe I'll just give up on being so hard and say that Islam tolerates these kind of um, these kind of attitudes. Or Islam, let's be on the final. Maybe we could pave a way for more and more conversation. This happens a lot, even from the ah, Maybe we'll pave a conversation. Maybe we'll open up their hearts. Maybe we could get them in. Because how else are we going to bring in da'wah if we're going to say but that Islam is totally against us on the spot? And it, although it sounds very, uh, very attractive, although it sounds very, what is the word, but um, spicy, and you would think, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe it will be something that can bring them. And then you will get a lot of so-called politicians, whatever it is, and they will say, well, you know, we have to use the gradual process and we'll justify it that the Quran was also revealed gradually and that some of the revelations or some of the, 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 the leg legislature in Islam was was uh, gradually revealed so let's not rush let's do the gradual part and then they'll be the ones to decide what is given in and this is really important to say because what we're seeing right now is that the younger generation there was a time without naming who but there was a time where you had certain islamic organizations that were doing a dual a dual discourse one discourse for the muslims and one discourse for the non-muslims but then when they felt that they got carried away or they, they got caught on some of that dichotomy some of that dual discourse that's when they started giving in and they started using the same type of discourse that they were using in talking to the muslims to the non-muslims they started using it on the Muslims as well. The second generation started hearing one side, which is the English part. And that sounds very hypocritical. That sounds very modified. And they started saying that that is Islam. And that's why you're seeing the new Islam coming in, and specifically from those that did not learn Islam from its resources. There are certain resources. Don't modify the religion. Don't change the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you thought that you might gain some political benefit, some economical benefit, or some kind of a listening ear. Diplomacy does not mean you change the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't change the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will not find any change, any change in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and this is really important to mention because if you put it in the context where you want to remember that when sorry you guys, but I have to tell my husband to turn off the stove. I'm sure he forgot. What you want to remember, comes in a context where usually people are feeling insecure to say the truth, feeling lack of safety, feeling that in order for me to gain some benefit, in order for me to gain some power, I would have to give up on some of my principles. I knew it. Just said, okay, that means the food is burnt. 
<laughs> At least you can blame him. No. Well, it doesn't work. At the end, it's burnt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now. All right. Well, Amy. Well, and Tajdam al Tulihim will Tahada. Again, the context is that when people, when people might offer you certain benefits, you want to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you change or modify the words and the principles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not going to find a, a safe haven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is telling you, and you will not find a safe haven outside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because if you're going to think, again, that, oh, I might modify certain things to make it seem not as hard and not as straightforward, and I need to kind of modify certain words, what happened? There was another story that was related to this, is that the, when, the, when the Sahaba, or when the Muslims had defeated Quraysh in the Battle of Badr, the people of Quraysh were preparing themselves. So in order to bring fear in the hearts of the Muslims, some people were coming from the Quraysh area and going to the Muslims in Medina and telling them and telling them that the people of Quraysh they're actually preparing themselves meaning prepare yourself for a defeat now that's when the ayah was revealed those people that were told that all the people right now are collecting and gathering their power and fear them. So they said, Hasbunallahu Namal Wakeel. They would say, We rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our only uh, um, safe haven and uh, our only and our best refuge, and that's enough for us. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised them. Now let's continue with this. Now, just as they wanted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to modify certain things. وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيمِ Another type of modification was probably getting in the way. There was a story for this ayah. And the story was, is that the Sahaba, the ones that were going into Islam, were really the poor Sahaba. They were ex-slaves or very poor or people that weren't necessarily on the highest level of being you know be, being in a very charismatic level so the prophet ﷺ, the chieftains of quraysh they said well you know the only ones that are following you are really the lesser class the low class the those that are considered like the the least the least uh uh, the least um, uh, blessed or the, the people that aren't necessarily in the high class. So the Prophet ﷺ, they were telling him, well, if only you would give up on those, you know, poor guys, we might actually come more often and learn probably or, or sit with you. So the Prophet ﷺ, he was, he was being told about, you know, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Ammar ibn Yasir, um, Bilal ibn Rabah, those are ex-slaves or ex-shepherds, maids, servants, those those are the people, you know, and the Prophet ﷺ, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling him, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ And be patient. Now, the word وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ Very important to look at the terms here because Wasbir nafsaka, meaning that you yourself, you have some power over your nafs. And this is something that is happening during our time, is that many are saying that they've got all these mental illnesses, etc. I, I agree that there are mental illnesses, there are mental illnesses that are a result of chemical imbalances, etc., but most depression and most of those cases are actually coming because people are so used to all those entertainments 
that they couldn't learn how to fix their nafs, to live reality. And wasbir nafsaka is also telling you that you, this is within your power. To keep your nafs, to hold your nafs from it, wanting to go further, whether on the <clears throat> negative side or on the our more pleasure side, it is within your power or else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have ordered you or would not have obligated you to do something that is beyond your power. It is within your power to discipline yourself, to put positive energy within you. You're getting positive, you're becoming positive. Or to hold yourself and to keep yourself away from going into that uh, into that uh, into that slippery slope and getting away with things. Wasbir, the word sabara, actually means to hold, to imprison, to keep from doing. This is sabr. Wasbir nafsaka, meaning you have to do your own tazkiya to get to that level. What tazkiya? Ma'alladina yad'una rabbahum. Do your own tazkiya with those that invoke or call on to their Lord throughout the day and throughout the night what do they want they want the face of their Lord the face of their Lord the word the face of their Lord is not only the face but it means that they they want for they want it for the sake of their Lord. And it's really important to mention here is that وَصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ Although this was, there was a, there was a reason for this revelation, but this is something for all of us to remember that at many times it can happen. There's a qa'da faqiyah that says الْعِبْرَ بِعْمُومُ اللَّفْضِ لَا بِخُصُوصِ السَّبَبِ a qa'da faqiyah is a legal maxim that means that al-ibra bi'umum al the text, we take it as generally and not necessarily because of a specific time, because it was revealed for a specific <coughs> reason. I'll give you an idea. Hijab. I'm sure you guys watched that video where it has almost 5.7 million viewers of this Pakistani lady named Samina who was saying that hijab is not obligatory anymore because hijab was revealed it was TED talk uh, because hijab was revealed because some uh, some guys were uh, were taking advantage of the non-slave women meaning the free women and since we don't have any slavery anymore, therefore hijab is not obligatory. That's how she understood it. Without realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that uh, the qa'da faqiyya, bi khusus sabab Everything in the Quran is not necessarily because of a, a reason of revelation and it waits until there. Because if every single reason we're going to say, well, there was a context and therefore that's the end of it. No more. We don't need to apply it anymore. The story ended. Where do we get the evidence that the story did not end, but this is a continuous revelation? Today, I have completed your religion. This is part of religion. When I get a text, what I consider is the general term, every single term. It doesn't end dur during the Prophet ﷺ, but it continues till this day. All right? Even if there was a certain context. Wasbir nafsaka, and this is also telling us, it might happen that you might feel that certain religious people or those that spend hours and hours making dua for their Lord throughout the day and throughout the night and they're trying to gain elevation in their spirituality, you might find them boring. It can happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, wasbir nafs, nafsaki, or for a mudhakkar, wasbir nafsaka. 
You got to, in order for you to gain that discipline and gain that elevation, that spiritual elevation, you got to hold yourself. You got to connect yourself with those that seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are always making the dua and don't get bored. They might be boring, but there's no way for you to gain that elevation in your iman unless you have the start of your spiritual elevation in where you are patient in connecting yourself and befriending those that are doing dua and those that are connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the dhikr, with the dua, with qira'at al-Qur'an to you in the beginning, you're not used to it. You may find it boring. But here's one tip of spiritual elevation, this ayah. Start by getting that patience in to connect yourself with the right people for spiritual elevation because they are your door for elevation. They're an entrance for elevation. And don't turn your eyes away from them. In where you might turn somewhere else. All it means, you see, why do you say غض البصر or تعدو عينك? Because your eyes have a limited span. Right? You can look up to 180 degrees almost. And then after that, it becomes the corner of your eye. You can't really see it. All right? But when it comes to ears, whether the person was behind you or in front of you, it's pretty much a 30, 60, a 360 degree angle. But then the farther it is, you can't see it. Unlike your eyes and the way they work, right? In order for you to see something, in order for you to see something, you might need to turn your face, but with your eyes, your friends might be sitting at a 80 degree angle and your other friends may be sitting at a 45 degree angle. It was just a glance that your eye went from this angle to that angle. And they could be just 45 degrees angle apart. Ta'du'aynaka is just a matter of where your attention and focus is. And that's why ta'du'aynaka, don't let your attention, your focus, your eyes, yourself turn away. It's just an attention. Who are you paying more attention to? Who are you giving more attention to? The salihin or the other people? Because once you turn your attention span to another direction, what's going to happen? Then your your turidu zinat al hayat al dunya. Then what you're seeking with that is nothing but a certain certain beautification, a certain beauty in dunya. What happens? Tip number three. And don't obey. Man aghfalna qalbahu an dhikrina. Those whose hearts were pacified. Look at this word. Pacified. No way, no, no realize. Pacify, attention. So we're looking at focus. Man aghfalna qalbahu an dhikrina. Don't get your heart. Don't obey. Whose heart was pacified away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning what? This is all about friendship. Even though there was a context for the revelation, but you want to remember, it continues until the time of today in order to tell you that here are tips for your spiritual elevation. Just be careful. Who are you hanging out with? Are you wanting dunya? Who is your attention focused on? Who are you dealing with? Who is your gain? Who is your group? Who is your, your pal? All of that. That's basically telling you, if that person, their heart was pacified away from dhikr, dhikr, reading Quran, tasbih, istighfar, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in action, making salah in action, um, in action, could be hijab, could be salah, could be siyam, this is all this is all dhikr in action, dhikr in tongue. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa ilaha illallah, memorizing Quran. This is dhikr in tongue. Dhikr in visual 
visual dhikr, where you're doing meditation, thinking your eyes and themselves can be doing that dhikr, where you're looking at um, the, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all these different things in order to go farther. You're focused, your eyes, on something that is going to gain that spiritual elevation. If that friend, their heart was pacified away from the oral, visual, action, behavioral dhikr, then find a different friend. But it doesn't even have to be a friend too. It, could be like, it doesn't have to be a friend. Like but I'm just, uh, absolutely. Like I'm not talking about friend meaning yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Okay, but if we're here talking about friend right. to mean the people that you spend time with. Right. Tuta. Don't obey them. Find a different group. Because that friend, they basically would follow their own hawa. Because if they're not following dhikr, if they're not following dhikr, they're not following the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in their words, in their behavior, in their visualization and what they're looking at. And visualization can also mean mind, can also mean perspective, can also mean perception and right, wrong, and the list goes on and on. That's also visual. وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ And they would follow their own hawa. What is الهوى? الهوى basically means usually an inclination. When you talk about hawa, it can be an inclination. And الهوى is wind. But الهوى, wind, it actually takes you into that inclination. الهوى it gives you, it's very subtle. You can't see it, but it does push things around, even though you can't see it. How do you know that there's wind there? It's only when you see things moving, right? And that this is really important. Shafi'i says, Shafi'i, a very smart and a, a scholar that died at age 45, which me, as a 40-year-old woman, would consider him a very young man. 45 years old, he had severe hemorrhoids. To the point, these severe hemorrhoids, he would get a pillow and sit on it, and it would be full of blood because of the pain, because of the bleeding, and he would still continue. Down at age 45. He says, There's no good in the man, in the person that keeps on changing. Their behavior keeps on changing. Whenever the wind blows in a certain direction, they will go with the flow. When the wind blows in a certain direction, they'll get blown in that direction. It says there's no good in that person. Why? Because that person is not basing their life based on a principle, but they're basing their life based on the people around them. And if you're basing your behavior and your principle based on the people around you, that would actually mean it can keep changing. The principle is not there anymore, but there's one thing that's there, which is benefit to gain popularity, to gain wealth, to gain different things. So that's why you'll be moving with that. Once your need changes, you'll be changing your principle. And that's why when you want to look for a husband, the first thing that you want to look into, is this a person of a principle? <coughs> is this person of a principle? Because if it's a man that does not stand in his life on a principle, then when he's done with you, he could transgress his limits with you because his need stops. And he'll only be nice when he's in need. But that's not a person of principle. And of course, that's going to keep changing. And it's so strange how in our modern days, girls are always looking at general appearance, you know, brown-eyed or green-eyed and six-pack and who knows what and the list goes on and on. That's, that doesn't make a man. That doesn't make a man. What makes a man or makes a woman is really the principle that they carry. The principle that they carry. But if they're willing to change their principle just to gain attention, 
just to gain some kind of a personal gain. That's not a personal principle. Willing to take off her hijab just to so others can can see her and and accept her. How far can it go? How far can wanting to be accepted go? Right? And who is she wanting or who is she or he considering as an important figure to gain acceptance from? Because if it's people, I don't know where it's going to end at. It's never going to, satis to, to end at a point of satisfaction because it's going to keep on going. But if the person has their goal on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says even. Ya Bani Adama qad anzalna ilaykum libasa yuwari sawatikum warisha wa libasa taqwa dhalik khad. O people, sons of Adam, we have, we have sent, anzalna ilaykum, we have sent down libasa, libas, clothes, yuwari sawatikum, that's going to cover your, that's going to cover your privates, yuwari sawatikum, or the, the, the private or sawa is actually something that is not good to look at. Warisha and such your feathers. And the best of the garments is the garment of taqwa. The garment of taqwa. Call it libas of taqwa. Libas it taqwa. The garment of taqwa. And that's in order to bring about a better understanding of how you see the world around you. How do you consider an important it's not just garment, friendship, relationship, time. How do you what do you base it on? Do you base it on do you base it on dhikr? Do you base it on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or do you base it on what gain I'm gonna get? Because if they're ittaba they followed their their pleasures. They followed their pleasures. وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا And their matter, فُرُطًا, فُرُطًا, meaning it's not going to end. The pleasure is not going to end there. It's going to keep a فُرُطًا. It's going to be just like a bead where you opened it up and it's going to go one after another. It's not going to stop. Because the pleasure, the desire, the different, uh, the, the, the different things that people are going to convince you in, it's going to أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا. It's not going to stop at one thing. That's not a, exactly, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, well, you know, if you're seeking friendship, although there's a context, but in our context, if you're seeking friendship, well, you got to have patience. And, وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَكَ عَنْهُمْ Don't turn yourself away, not even with your sight, away from those that are seeking الْآخِرَة. And if you might think that you are seeking some kind of a benefit, some kind of a dunya gain, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, that's not what you want. وَلَا تُطْعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا And don't follow whose heart was pacified or whose heart we pacified away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ And they would follow their pleasures and their matters are going to be in reckoning. Meaning one after another. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ To continue. The context with that one is that the people of Quraysh were telling the Prophet ﷺ to leave those young slave boys, guys that had become Muslim, and in order to gain the chieftains to become Muslim. So now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling the Prophet ﷺ, "Waqul al-haq min Rabbikum," and say, "Truth is from your Lord." I have, have nothing to do with it. That's what God Almighty is revealing. I'm not the one that's going to modify anything. Truth is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not about me. I can't change anything. But here's a question. Why say, وَقُلِ الْحَقِّ Why not just say, الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Because the, because the angel Jibreel alayhi salam was revealing it with, with the word قُلْ So the Prophet ﷺ would say the exact words as Jibreel alayhi salam said it. Even with the word qul. The word qul means and say. Or say. So when we say, qul huwa Allahu ahad, say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. So why didn't he just say, Allahu ahad? Because Jibreel alayhi salam, the Prophet salam, was very specific. That's how Jibreel said it. So the Prophet salam is going to say it, including with a quote. 
even with the quote. Qul is going to be part of the quote. He said it that way, I'm going to say it that way. With the quote. Very detailed, very specific. وَقُلِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And say truth is from your Lord. Meaning, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to change anything. This is the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not me. It's not me that modifies or me that decides. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنُ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرُ Whoever wants to believe, وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرُ And whoever wants to disbelieve, then let them disbelieve. But why this? Why this whole thing? Because just say the truth. If they want to reject it, don't go in too much remorse. Because in the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf, in the beginning of Allah, uh, Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, was actually telling him, don't go into much, It seems that you're putting in too much, you're being hard on yourself, and you're feeling so sorry for, for them because they're not believing in, in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, right here, in the end, don't feel all that remorse. Whoever wants to believe can believe, and whoever wants to reject it, you don't change or modify the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain acceptance. You say the truth regardless of whether they accepted it or not. Whoever wants to believe, let them believe. Whoever doesn't want to believe, then let them for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inna a'tadina, for we have a'tadina. The word a'tadina means prepared. Inna a'tadina lil-zalimina. We have prepared for the zalimin. Naran ahata bihum suradukuha. Lil-zalimin, what is zalim? A zalim is the person that transgressed the limits. A zalim, anybody that transgressed transgresses the limits. So how is it that a person can be zalim li nafsu? How can a person be transgressing the limits with themselves? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you certain balances. If you go beyond those balances, you yourself have oppressed yourself. So these people they went against the balance, against the principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, against the principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had set. So these people are transgressing the limits. Naran, naran, nar is hellfire. Ahata bihum suradikuha, meaning that is surrounding them, that is fire, that's actually surrounding them. And there's no way that they can run away from it. Wa iyastaghithu. And when they seek help, what do they seek? And when they seek refuge, when they seek for any kind of a, any kind of like of a backup and a refreshment, and that in يستغيثو, like to seek, to seek refreshment, to seek any kind of a, any kind of a help. And when they call, for any kind of a support or any kind of refreshment, yughathu. This is sarcastically saying yughathu bima in Yughathu meaning that they will be given a refreshment. Yughathu bima in They will be given water. Kalmuhl. Kalmuhl is like lava, which it would even grill or burn their faces. Bi'sa sharab Bi'sa sharab wa sa'at murtafaqa. What a horrible drink. Wa sa'at murtafaqa. And a very bad location and a destination that they will be in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep that away from us. Yet on the other side, inna ladhina amanu Inna ladina amanu, as for those that believe and do what is good. Ladina amanu. Amanu, what is it iman? Il iman mawakara fil qalb. Il iman is in the heart. 
and عملوا الصالحات meaning that they had done good deeds but here's the question what are good deeds what are good deeds remember and say truth is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your Lord you can't modify it this is a very important thing because when we talk about truth and specifically when we talk about actions morality ethics there is no way to prove anything moral or immoral just by deep contemplation and that's it there are so many different theories that try to in philosophy that try to bring about an understanding or a definition to morality and justice so many definitions david humes and kant's and and uh, and john locke and and um, and uh, frederick nietzsche and all the marx and karl marx and all those so many different philosophers that tried to get the philosophy what makes justice or what makes justice and we've got so many theories how do we prove justice at the end of the day we can't really prove something to be justice or not if we're just going to use our own human mind because our own human mind is very weak and it uh, lacks the data to know all of everything about people and the society. Not only does it lack data, but there's absolutely no way as humans that we can separate ourselves from our pleasures and say, I'm only thinking with my mind here there's no way that you could actually do that because you are so intertwined, you are just so deconnected that the pain your own uh your own the, the your own culture your sex your mind your pains the the experiences that you went through all these different things can have their impact on what you perceive as right or wrong everything so to say one particular idea or that particular person's idea or judgment makes sense or is based on experience therefore it is more accurate it's not necessarily 100 percent true and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us right here that and say that truth is from your lord and therefore when we talk about those that do good those that do good salihat or is a general term those that act based on principle those that do what is right the principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set not what the community and not what legislature and all these different legislations or legislators would would define as right and wrong because that will keep on changing it's going to keep on changing and it is so sad that we see our younger generation right now thinking that oh yeah i i'm actually better than my parents because i happen to live in america rather than they were living somewhere in some kind of an african country or who knows what and therefore i have better free thinking than my parents or do you how can you prove that? You can't really prove anything. And that's why, and say to this from your Lord. And even if you want to define principle, you got to remember that principle goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to be defined. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will not lose. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping track keeping track of every single deed that was done in we do not lose or keep track of those that have done good deeds allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to lose it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping track of everything those 
they would have Jannat. Il Jannah, Il Jannah, Il Jannah is basically a hidden. Il Jannah is a hidden garden. When we talk about Jannah, it's hidden. But one thing to understand is that Il Jannah, surrounding Jannah, are things that you hate. And surrounding hellfire are things that you like. So what does that mean? Let's put it into an art. When you go to Jannah, to put it in art, surrounding Jannah are things, thorns, and this is, this is not true, but I'm just giving an example. Okay. Surrounding Jannah, things that you hate, like thorns and things to keep you away from it. Versus when you talk about hellfire, it's all about flowers, candies, very tempting. But inside is something else. All right, so think of it this way. Now, let's go to the actual thing. The actual thing is that the Prophet ﷺ says, حُفَّةِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِ Il Jannah is surrounded by things that you will hate. You won't necessarily like that you pray early in the morning and wake up early in the morning. But here's a question. Will I reach a level where there is actually beauty in the things that I hate? Is there such a thing? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> but here's the thing. To get to that point, you know, when you look at the people from other faiths, Buddha and Buddhists and, and yoga and um, yoga and, and the Taos and all that, they, you know what, when I was in Palestine, I actually, I'd actually see a number of, they, what do they call them? I forgot what they call them, but it's where monks live in. Oh. No, that's not a temple. No, they're basically they're far away. They're out. Uh, they're up in, a, in high mountains, really far to get to. And you go inside, and all they have is rusty forks and spoons. Um, probably some water. They'll have their little garden. Their clothes at many times really smells bad because they haven't washed it in a long time etc and this is really scary because just as we could think um umar ibn al-khattab let me see the story umar ibn al-khattab one time passed by a monastery that's what it's called passed by a monastery and he started crying he said because the ayah says that um that um, meaning that a person has been doing a lot they were raising their backs pray in prayer for a very long time they will be getting into hellfire he started crying because he said this is the amila nasiba but are we part of that? Standing for long hours to pray, but not realizing that it's not an issue of necessarily only standing long times to pray, but it's also having the intention for Allah subhanahu wa Same thing. It's not an issue of just wearing the hijab, but doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa And the list goes on and on. When we look at when we look at Hufat al Jannatu bil surrounding Jannah, all the things that you might hate to get in there. You have to, you know, a lot of pleasures give up on it maybe a job, maybe a college offer that you got, or even, you know, as a, as a, I got all these different offers when I was in in, in college to study abroad and it's a scholarship and of course every girl or boy dreams oh I'm getting a scholarship to go and and study abroad or oh, how fun etc and it becomes very attractive to many because look I'm actually gonna get there and this is my path to success and without you realizing it might actually be a slippery slope that might take you something else somewhere else
And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he says, فَتَزِلَّ قَدَمٌ بَعْدَ ثُبُوتِهَا When the feet, when the feet might go into and slip, slip after being very steadfast. They were very steadfast, but it was just a slip. They were very steadfast. She was holding on to her dean, or he was holding on to his dean very well, but it was just a slip. Talked to the wrong people, added the wrong people, a very small slip. Happened to make a the wrong friend. It was just that it all started with buying a ticket to somewhere else. It all started where she just went on a trip. She just decided to study a certain major. And the list goes on and on. Just when you think that's where it all started, it was just the slip that took her into a totally different direction. So when we say, that Jannah was surrounded with things that you hate, remember, in the beginning, while you're in the level, there's the level of Islam, the level of Iman, the level of Ihsan. When you're in the level of Islam, to go up from the level of Islam to the level of Iman, you're going to put a lot more effort because you're taking, you're giving up on a lot of different things in your life and pleasures because you had become Muslim. The stronger you get, you give up on a lot more things than you go into the level of Iman. But being on the level of Iman doesn't necessarily mean that you have gone up because you are still struggling with that level of Iman. You're still struggling to maintain your Islam. You're still struggling to maintain your halal um, money. You're still struggling to maintain a lot of these halal things. But in order to maintain these things, you still might slip sometimes, go off the track sometimes. A lot of times. A lot of times. But the stronger you hold on to it, you want to remember <coughs> is that in order to go up, you have to bend your legs down and push against the gravity and jump. And that's how you want to think of it. You got to push against your own gravity and your own gravity is none other but your hawa and your pleasures and your nafs. You got to push against that. You got to give up on it because if you don't, then it's going to be that gravity that's going to pull you down. Gotta give up on it. And the more you give up on it, during the stage of Iman, you will still, you are still trying to get that power in order to jump higher. And you're still trying to practice the faith. And at many times, at many times that practice, it doesn't necessarily come with yet the beauty of Iman. Meaning that the person doesn't necessarily feel a special feeling of Iman yet. It isn't until they become <coughs> so indulged in that Iman, Taqwa lifestyle, that it becomes who they are. Once that lifestyle becomes who they are, it feels like that's why the Prophet says that the person will not they will not be believers until they would hate to leave Islam as much as they would hate to be thrown in hellfire. Unless they would hate leave Islam as much as they would hate to be thrown in hellfire. Unless she would hate to take off her hijab as much as she would hate that anybody would uh, would that um that any pains she would get because to her that's a that's a pain. Taking away a principle that she carries. To her is pain. Leaving salah no, 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 no. or not waking up for salah, it's a painful thing. And that's when you'll know that you've got the iman. That's the iman right there. Once the person starts seeing truth as lovely and dear to their heart, that they do not want to be observed or want, would not want to practice otherwise, then they have started on the threshold of going into the level of Ihsan. What is the level of Ihsan? It's when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
what happens, what does it mean as if you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what it means is that as if you have become so transparent with truth, as if you saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you this is the truth. You have become so transparent with the things around you that you don't even wait for more and more signs to prove to you that Islam is من عند الله سبحانه وتعالى. That Islam is, Islam is from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. You have resonated deeply with Islam that as if you could see Allah سبحانه وتعالى. As if Allah سبحانه وتعالى was revealing onto you. But of course, the reveal not to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's the highest of Iman. Continue. Ulaika lahum jannatu adn. Those are the people that would get the jannatu adn. Tajri min tahtiha al anhar. Tajri min tahtiha al anhar that has flowing rivers from underneath it. Yuhallawna fiha min asawra min hak min dahab. Yuhallawna. Notice here that the word yuhallawna is say it did not say who is beautifying them it said you hallowna they are being beautified they are given somebody is putting the different the different treasures on them but you hallowna fiha min asawir they're being they're given all these treasures but when it came to the word the verb yalbasuna it actually contained the object in it and it said okay, they so would like put I on the garments for themselves when it came to the jewelry it so said that they would be beautified so there's another there's somebody else that's putting the jewelry on them but for the clothes no they're putting it on for themselves only inside the lights even in the akhirah, are you done? there are certain Cheers. principles that don't change. So, have you been certain to principles Skype? don't change? I find it so strange that many women would have ask, "So, the, why doesn't a woman get multiple male homes? Just like a man is going have to get multiple male homes." A common question that's starting to come right now. Would any woman want multiple men as husbands? This is subhanAllah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in Jannah said that for the, the man he can have multiple wives, but the woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the man the power of a hundred men but did not say that the woman will get multiple husbands. There are certain are principles the of hayat that will be there even in Jannah. Yalbasuna. Some, they are putting the clothes by themselves to maintain hayat even in Jannah. It's so strange. Even in Jannah, it's always talking about clothes. And even in Jannah, he was also always covered. emphasizing covering the, the covering because even in Jannah yep. so and out. even so in Jannah it, it also but emphasized it. how the women no man has ever touched those women emphasizing the modesty the bashfulness emphasizing akhlaq, certain principles, and it even emphasized on the women and how they are dressed. It's so strange how man, Kenyan Thakis, can go so backwards in their understanding, especially during our time right now. People have gone so far in science, in scientific studies, but so backwards in studying the simplest thing about principles 
where right now, what was common sense that our ancestors who had less knowledge about science can right now think that it's okay for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman. We have gone back to even realizing yesterday I was in this in this meeting at, at the university that I work in and every single person was introducing themselves where she would say i am jessica she her her or whatever the pronoun that they would use seriously have we gone so backward in realizing that the differences that Allah lost are created in this world that Allah lost pantata created male and female and right now we have gone so backward Okay, in the so way we realize ten, feminine masculine that is so obvious ten, that when the child is born it what? is so clear that we have gone ten so far and we could think that we could just put injections look at this Go. iblis allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was saying Three. that iblis was was promising that I, he will change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I will order them to change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why to change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Iblis does not have power over you in order to have the power over you he will change the outside of you will convince you to change the outside of you in order to change your heart once you change of how you <coughs> feel about yourself and who you are and what you are, that's when you would be in total delusion of where you should be heading. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ says, Man, uh, Whoever imitates any group of people, then they're from them. And this is really important to mention because you know, um, Ibn Taymiyyah wrote a book, it's called Iqtada' al-Sarat al-Mustaqeem. Iqtada' al-Sarat al-Mustaqeem is going in detail about how Islam has considered the Muslims as a totally separate community with its features, with its identity, and that it can't go into a different identity because the second it goes into a different identity, then that would actually mean they have exacerbated their own identity without them realizing. And even Tanya focuses a lot on haircuts and, and, and body features and certain things in, 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 their, in, in their practices because that could be the start of how you change your identity. I think it's even translated. I, do, I have no idea. Um, and how did I get there? But this is really important because, like I said, Iblis is working. And right now, even changing who you are and your own creation and calling it, well, now we can actually use hormones and we can make the man look like a woman and the woman look like a man and doing all these different changes and don't you dare say anything because the second you chair you dare to say anything all those all those comments of you being lacking tolerance and you being disrespectful and all those are going to be poured at you and you're going to be called all these different names of spreading hate and they will be wearing in other words they themselves will wear the garments that are green min sundus sundus wa istabraq there is a certain fabric and a certain material muttaki'ina fiha muttaki' muttaki'ina fiha ala al-ara'ik muttaki'ina means that they're doing they're inclining they're resting they're just having a a good moment because when do you when do you incline you incline when you don't hold any any response when you're not holding any responsibility you don't feel in a rush you're just yes. responsibilities etc and you just it's like okay you're letting yourself relax you relax throughout <laughs> absolutely they're resting are basically couches sofas things to rest on is the opposite 
is the up ni'ma is the opposite of bi'sa. Bi'sa means what a horrible. Meaning it's it's a horrible thing. But ni'ma means it's a good thing. But here it said ni'ma thawab. Meaning what a great thawab. Thawab is reward. Wa hasunat murtafaqa. Hasunat murtafaqa meaning what a great destination. Now the story. Because this can happen into a, a dialogue. Well, this dialogue, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ رَجُلَيْنِ And give them the example of two men. مَثَلَ رَجُلَيْنِ Two men. This is a true story. جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ The first one, he was given two gardens. مِنْ أَعْنَابْ وَحَفَفْنَاهُمَا بِنَخْلِ The gardens had great trees and surrounding those great trees there were hafafnahuma hafafnahuma meaning that they were totally surrounded binakhl with palm trees now why the grape leaves because great great trees required a lot of work they require a lot of maintenance wajalna bainahuma zar'a so you've got two gardens on every side of the garden there's great leaves and surrounding those great trees there are palm trees and between the grape and the palm trees there are other plants there are other plants both of those jannah both of those jannat atat ukulaha atat ukulaha meaning that it is fully ripe it is fully ripe and fully ready to eat and fully uh and, and, and it had uh, lots of fruits in fact it did not even oppress him in any way what does that mean this is telling us that earth the world around you has certain responsibilities your responsibility is to dig the earth in order for the land to give you the the fruit that you dug for this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you Lam minhu meaning that there's a certain rule there's a certain we'll come back inshallah